There okay. we go. Hello, this is Simon Krasner doing an interview with Bill Ryan. Um, the time is 11.07, and it is the um, 17th of January, 2024. Um, where, where would you like to start with your um, introduction to the Historical Society and the work that you've done with well, the Historical I, mean, Society? I showed up in uh, Palm Coast about 26 years ago after a long history in Europe and the photographic industry. Uh, I was a CEO of several corporations and uh, somewhat of an inventor. Uh, did quite a few things in my career, which was checkered. And uh, the first place I went was the library yeah, because uh, I wasn't aware that the history group even existed. So uh, I got connected with the library and uh, we started delving into the history of uh, Flagler County. So that's how you met up and what was the first project that you worked on with them? Well, we had uh, something called uh, Flagler Memories. And uh, we had a professional interviewer and I had uh, still a lot of computer and video equipment from my prior life. And we started interviewing uh, people in Flagler County on the early digital uh, cameras. Uh, we also uh, started uh, crazy interviewing veterans and this was before the uh, Library of Congress, the Congress thing. So we, we were doing veterans and uh, all sorts of history stuff. Unfortunately, uh, I thought the way to preserve them was to put them on CD disc, but that turned out to be a disaster. Uh, because uh, video at that time was still very primitive. And uh, most people had computers that couldn't run our CDs. So they were driving us nuts, uh, peeling for copies of their husband or grandfather's interview. And of course, uh, there was no place to put this stuff. So uh, I started a the first website in Flagler County and uh, was fortunate to uh, have my own server through via my son. And so I had my own internet server, uh, was able to put up a county website. I still wasn't real involved with the history people. We were working from the library. The uh, Cisco Dean annex in a way didn't exist it, it was just getting started uh, formerly it was the uh, veterans uh, association and uh, cisco dean acquired it uh, for the history group about that time hmm. and now that's how that history worked itself out well, uh, we, tracking down the history of a society is difficult. Yeah, well, we found there had been history societies over the years under different names and so forth, uh, but very little or no records of them. Uh, the uh, uh, the Flagler memories thing sort of led me into contact with Cisco Dean, who was fundamentally doing the same thing. Uh, and uh, we were able to acquire uh, his website and uh, make a website for the history group about that time. Uh, then the stuff started pouring in. The uh, county uh, attorney, Al Hadid, had been collecting voluminous 
history stuff. And uh, I ended up with about four or five bankers boxes of records and started reading them and said, oh my God, <laughs> this place uh, reeks with history. You know, uh, that's when uh, Old King's Road appeared, and the sawmill and all that good stuff, which I had no idea it existed. And uh, until I started reading Hadid's documents and after that, it, one thing led to another. It's amazing what can be found when somebody finally starts to look around for actual history for an area. Well, no one gave a, gave a darn. At that time, we were uh, uh, the fastest growing area in uh, the United States uh, due to the development. And uh, the only history stuff was a bus tour uh, being conducted uh, by a local member of the African American Society. And I took the tour. And the next thing I knew, I was doing the bus tour, <laughs> uh, which went on for about 20 years, on and off. That was an adventure unto itself because we never knew uh, if we were touring or not. The, uh, we, we depended on the uh, transportation group of the county and they were funded by the federal government. So we were kind of almost illegal <laughs> touring and uh, month by month, we were never too sure we'd have a bus, but uh, it continued. It's interesting to bring up that whole aspect of it. You weren't really sure if the whole legality of the touring situation or whether it would exist into the next day. Yeah, we're, next using, yeah. Month. we're uh, using the bus system that we shouldn't be using because it was funded by a federal grant and uh, it was for transportation. And here we were bouncing around on a hundred mile bus tour. Uh, and uh, as we did it, the, the stuff started pouring in. We had the website and we had the uh, tour. And the next thing I knew, uh, the stuff just was, was magical. The amount of information that just kept bouncing in. Um, well, here's one that might be a little bit easier. Why, why, do you, why do you do history? That's usually an easy question. I didn't hear that last. You, I, what was the question? Oh, um, what? What's your personal reason for doing history with the society or on your own before and after joining the society? Well, I spent many years bouncing around Europe. I was mm -hmm. on a World War II destroyer at the end of World War II, and. Uh, I wasn't a sailor, I was a tourist. And I, I kind of fell in love with history. Uh, but I wasn't a professor or any kind, but I was in contact with a lot of people from World War II, drinking German beer and all that good stuff. And uh, after that, I ended up working for a newspaper, Buffalo Evening News in Buffalo. And so uh, the writing part was there. Uh, it was all just kind of hiding. And when I uh, retired and turned up in uh, Palm Coast, uh, it just all seemed to uh, appear. You know, I had the writing, I had the internet going, I had the, uh, uh, what was called the good old boys in Flagler County, all dying to tell their stories. And uh, I was getting inundated. And thank God, uh, Cisco Dean existed because without him, uh, the thing would have gone down. I'm just mildly impressed by it. Um, well, which which project do you think you have the most pride in then of your time working with the society? Which, uh, 
Which one are you the most happy that you did? Well, of course, Ed, uh, Ed was a blessing. Uh, we used to see Ed sitting uh, morosely over his computer in this coffee shop every morning. Uh, he never said three words except good morning, and that's about it. And uh, at that time, he was ankle deep in weather, weather reporting, chasing tornadoes, and all sorts of stuff. And I said, hey, there's something interesting here called history. And the next thing, uh, he was sucked into the society, and he's been there ever since. So, uh, you know, it just, it's just is great that someone appears every now and then, like Ed, and takes the thing forward. Uh, there's been people prior to that. There's been history groups, but they, they would all disappear. The people would die off or the things didn't get written down. I, I've definitely seen quite a bit of that in my own studies of, of local history specifically. Um, well, the previous generation not coming up with ways to get the information to the following generation or the generation after that, and all of it disappearing with the societies themselves. Yes. Well, the problem with history is that it repeats itself. I know you've heard this a thousand times, but uh, I do a great deal of reading. I spent a lot of time wandering around Rome, uh, the Roman ruins. This was in 1950 when there were no tourists there. And uh, the thing I found is that history just repeats over and over and over and over. And uh, it's really important because if you don't know about history, uh, you really don't know what's coming at you. And uh, it gives you a pretty good overview of the world. And I think anyone that wants to exist in this world ought to know a bit of history. Uh, just as a self-defense, because it does repeat itself and always has. I was going to ask you a question about what kind of information would you want to pass on to future historians, but I think you answered that pretty well there. Is there anything you'd like to make in addition to that? Well, it takes money. And uh, the problem always is when a uh, budgetary outfit, like a county or a city, uh, gets strapped for tax money, uh, what's the first thing that gets cut? Uh, libraries, number one. Number two, history societies. Uh, you just don't justify your existence and uh, you do get cut. So without money, you, you just can't go forward. And the second thing is, of course, uh, people that care enough to be members of your group and volunteer and do work uh, in any organization. Uh, there's only a tiny little group that does the work. One of the things that I put up to um, some of your fellow historians was is there anything that you'd like to say to somebody who's probably going to read this or see this in maybe 20 years? Well, I, 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 about I, Flagler history. I think the thing is, this area is so rich in history. We've got the, uh, the early Indians, of course. We've got the uh, early roads, uh, King's Road, uh, Dixie Highway, etc. And we've got the different European groups that were here. You got the uh, Spanish, you got the British, you got the French, which no one seems to know about. Uh, and then of course, uh, the Americans uh, coming in, <laughs> trying to take Florida by force. Uh, you got Andrew Jackson. All these guys essentially were here. And uh, my goodness, what a, 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 a deal it is for a developer to wake up 
that uh, his land is historic. And maybe, uh, maybe there's some people that care about it. Maybe there's some people that would come here or spend their money uh, if they knew more about it. I, I wrote a travel book. The last book I wrote was a tour book. And it's not a bad tour book. Uh, it's pretty good. But of course, it changes all the time. I've got a new book, which is coming out, and uh, it's a doozy. It's called a Technology Chaser, Bill Ryan Technology Chaser, and uh, it's at the uh, printer right now, and it'll be coming out on Amazon. It's about five, four to five hundred pages, and uh, takes into account some of my European stuff, and I, I was the guy that published the Matthew Brady plates way back, long ago. I was the guy that had the Civil War plates. And I still have them, by the way. And so this thing is a is a biography of my wanders through, through history, uh, mostly in the photographic or imaging field. So I haven't given up. I'm uh, 91 going on a thousand so that's all right you're still kicking around you'll be still here for another 10 20 years well you might even you might even give this speech again in 20 years the only thing i'd leave with the history group is don't give up on the old guys uh you know when they when you think they're senile or going uh maybe they're not and uh that's why I like this Zoom stuff when it works and uh, yes. so forth. Um, do you have any other papers that you're particularly proud about and that you'd like to bring up in this interview so people can look it up? Well, I wrote seven books and the first book was poorly written, but I felt it had to be done was the search for Old King's Road because People had never heard of Old King's Road. I mean, even I, I, I had no idea what it was. And then, of course, along came the Dixie Highway. And uh, the so-called Brick Road is really the Dixie Highway, but no one seems to know it. Uh, we had a, uh, uh, a seaport in Flagler County, and I wrote about that in Lost Plantations where we shipped oranges uh, to merry old England to turn into a great drink called Flip. And the uh, English used to suck this up with rum and uh, Flagler oranges. Uh, we, you know, time of Shakespeare, uh, we were shipping oranges. Uh, no one knows that either. And uh, it's, uh, it just gets buried. So I love to find these little bits, tidbits, uh, the story of the French here and the Spanish is a doozy, uh, where the uh, Spanish destroy the French contact in America. But uh, it just goes on and on and on. There's no end to this thing. And uh, I think it's pretty exciting. I think you know that already. Uh, all the little bits and pieces that are lying about. So um, two good and, books. One is uh, Osceola, and uh, I don't speak Mikasuki or Hitachi, and yet I had the head of the Seminole tribe call me and say, we don't know how you did it. You, you speak our language. Well, I don't, but they said that you got everything right, the name's right, and everything in there is right. I, I don't want to explain that. But... Uh, the other one was He's Gray Eyes. Story to tell. Well, Gray Eyes, the book Gray Eyes, that's a uh, Seminole cattleman, and most of them were cattlemen of one shape or another. Uh, then Bulow Gold, that's another one that comes as close to a uh, fictional book as I ever wrote, but uh, it's all based on fact. It's all based on real, real people. And uh, 
I, uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. They're not great books. I, I'm not uh, a world-shaking author, but uh, they're, they're fun. I only use yours, your books. Pardon? It's only to like get background information, but your information is very good in there and can be used for academic studies. So don't don't knock yourself too badly on it. There's still good but, sources of information and good records of different times. I used to put references in the back, and then I said to hell with it because nobody reads them anyway. And <laughs> that's what I was looking for. <laughs> uh, why do it if nobody's going to look for it? Uh, but I did read all this stuff. Uh, we you had the library called Interlibrary Loan. And uh, by doing this, I could get original documents from any university that had them. So I ended up with a lot of the original documents. And each book, uh, I made a big folder, and I've got photocopies of the original documents in each folder. Uh, when I disappear, those will end up uh, to annoy the people in Flagler County at the historical, because they're about six to eight inches thick. And uh, we're talking about uh, the play that we tried to write uh, called The Road, and that's about that would fill a small banker's box of skits. And uh, we never finished it, but uh, it's still in written form, all these skits. They're, some of them are pretty good. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can only imagine uh, when, when it comes to like preserving this information, I'm just glad you have it all put together in writing for whatever comes next. Yes. And very few people actually have that prepared and planned out ahead of time. Well, there'll I be another ad, you know, someday. There's quite a lot of research just disappears with the people doing the research. Yeah, we were in two films, by the way. One of them, uh, came out on the History Channel, and no one seems to know that. I was the talking head uh, on Bulow, the Bulow Plantation. That was produced from uh, Orlando, from TV station in Orlando, and they sold it to the History Channel. And it did appear, it's still appearing. Uh, it's about the Bulow Plantation with Mr. Fisk and myself and a couple others. I also saw you in this PBS documentary as well. Yes. Is that the other one you're thinking of? Well, there, no, there were about three of them. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but these things disappear. I mean, you, you do them, they're there, and then they're gone. It really does happen that way. Yeah. Um, you told me about the play. Um, you also explained why you have a general interest in Flagler County very well. Um, you explained your uh, association with the society. Um, do you have it? Do you work with any um, any other groups besides the historical society and the uh, library? Like, do you work with the Agricultural Museum or the Palm Coast Historical Society? Oh, uh, we did briefly with the Ag Museum, but they they uh, they have their own problems. They have uh, financial and money problems, and it's it's a miracle that they've been able to exist as they have. Uh, <laughs> and they they haven't been well funded, and that's an understatement. Uh, now, uh, you know, they've been talking about a greeting center. See, we're only about 18 to 20 miles south of St. Augustine. And the people in St. Augustine are bored to tears 
uh, they keep getting the same thing, you know, going up and getting free chocolate and people in costumes. Uh, we're only 20 miles away. Uh, we could suck off a tremendous amount of traffic from St. Augustine if it were organized. Uh, it's there. It's like the mother load. And uh, it's supposedly history. And you know it isn't. <laughs> it's, it's just a very narrow bunch of St. Augustine history. But we've actually got more down here. We had over 20 plantations in Flagler County alone. There were 20 plantations here. And that is, is researched by books in the uh, History Museum. You know, it's there. Yeah, we only typically discuss the the big ones, the, the named ones, the BLO, the, the BLO. Hernandez, the... Um... Well, there's a, a ton of... Cisco has a map, or, or I had Cisco's map of plantations in Flagler, which was written in 1935 by one of the state uh, engineers. And uh, it shows 22, 22 plantations on the west side and, uh, of course, along King's Road. Make sure that map doesn't disappear. You've got it. It's, it's somewhere in the, in the uh, Cisco Dean affair. It's there. Okay. Can't tell you and where. Goes, and there goes me not knowing where half of the things are. There's so much information. And it well, only... we, yeah. We've made several attempts to categorize and list it, and none of them have really succeeded. Well, we could. I, I'm going to be with the society for a little bit longer. Um, there are there are proper um, accessions systems in which to preserve in, to save this information in ways in which it could be all found and categorized. Um, and it's really just a force of will in having the organization itself dedicate the time and people to getting such a thing done. The That's magic, usually what they come down to. The magic would be people. There's many people have made a stab at it over the years and recognized the need, but it just never happened. It's more of, it can't be done by one person. Exactly. Judging by the overall the amount of material that we that is here, um, if if I were like if there was a group of five interns, not just myself, we might have been able to do it within a semester. Yeah, five five college students working on it using what we would use at our own library. Um, the UNF library has a very good accession system in which we, we have full catalogs. We've got the catalogs on our library computer system and individually each student can look it up and find historical documents from Florida in general, the United States in general, Europe in general, and some of, um, uh, some of, uh, Southeast Asia and China, a little and information from Japan based on what we have shared with us and the programs that the university put together. But that's just what UNF can do because they have a full library team dedicated to preserving and archiving and developing these enormous archives in a five-story library with 10,000 feet. Um, wait, no, it wasn't. I think it was 100,000 feet per floor of storage space for those books, for those files, for those artifacts. A historical society like yourselves are doing it with maybe 10,000 feet at most, and you're storing the entire history of, an, of a county. 
Well, it, the county is a history of an era. In other words, starting back with the early Indians going right up to the American Revolution and the Civil War, et cetera, et cetera. So this county Chris, takes a huge can't. lump of stuff. That's why we did the road. Uh, as I say, we've got, I've got here files that are at least 10 inches thick on the road. And the problem there is just getting two people to agree uh, to something. Well, we decided to do it in a series of skits and do it like a uh, uh, 1920s vaudeville show and uh, have a skit. Uh, each uh, historical thing would be a skit, a short skit of no more than eight or 10 minutes. And we also used uh, front projection, in other words, powerful background, so that we didn't have props. And uh, we did it like a, as I say, a 1920 vaudeville show with a musician by the name of Captain Nick sitting uh, at one side of the stage with an authentic uh, late 1800s banjo. And he would have a song on each uh, skit. So it'd be both music and history. History bores people to tears. So you have to have music backing up your skit if you want to have any success. That's true. Sorry, I didn't mean to get this long and pull you into all this. No, that's part of what an interview is. It's the <laughs> encouragement of the interviewer to uh, get the interviewee to talk about what they want to talk about. And there's so much history in your mind that you would that you can talk about that it's a shame that we're only we've only gone for about thirty minutes. Yeah, but, I think we've gone over that. Oh, we've gone over that, maybe. But is, is there anything else that you'd like to bring up and talk about? No, no I just reserve it for later. I hope this thing just goes forward. Uh, all of the stuff I've got here is coming back to you guys. And each book is in a folder. And all the background papers are in the folder. In other words, I did keep the background copies of them. And uh, so it's it's a pile of stuff that uh, eventually will end up in your hands. Thank you so much for thinking. And drive so much for I want to mention another early one was Jack Clay. Uh, we used to drive for lunches with him and the uh, library director at that time, Doug Sisney, and I was invited along. And Jack would give us his own history of Flagler County, which he wrote a very good book on the history of Flagler County. Uh, and we would find uh, people like Gray Eyes. Um, <laughs> they were here, and they claimed to be from the lost colony. And uh, again, we found connections that uh, appeared to me to be real. So uh, there's been a lot of people contributing to the pile of stuff that's within Flagler County. It just needs someone to uh, grab a hold of it and pull it together. Uh, there's rumors, of course, that the uh, old courthouse will be available. Well, again, the answer to that is money. Uh, without money uh, or funding, nothing can happen. But uh, you've got uh, the fundamentals of a really good uh, attraction to bring people into Flagler County and use the uh, riches that exist in uh, to the north in St. Augustine and benefit greatly financially. Well, from my study of finances for museums, 
Some of the biggest museums receive almost 80% of their funding from private donations. Yes. So, with the preservation of history and historical societies, it's up to the community whether they want to donate to preserve the history at a facility like this in the Cisco Dean Li Research Library or the local libraries. It comes down to not just government funding that usually only usually accounts for maybe 25, 30, maybe 45 percent of the funding for uh, for history preservation, but the majority of it just comes down to people caring enough to want to preserve history. Well, history preservation can be fun. Yeah. And, uh, the the uh, analogy there are these people that dress up in expensive costumes and go marching around St. Augustine, you know, uh, portraying pirates, yo ho ho, stuff like that. Uh, but it's just basically entertainment. But that's what the public wants. They want to be entertained. And what, what better thing you can do than the wonderful history that exists within Flagler County? It's there. It's a, like a treasure. And uh, so far, no one's mined it out, but it, it's definitely there. Definitely need to do some more stuff with the railroads. Or yes. The rail, railroad work here. Or it's a whole... Um, and steamboat. Oh, don't no, forget the steamboats. Wasn't there a steamboat launching site from the inner Florida, like down in one of the major rivers? Well, you had uh, regular steamboat travel in Western Flagler, uh, coming in on a regular schedule from the uh, Saint La Saint John's River, and the channel uh, was dredged. It was a good channel going down here to Dead Lake. Dead Lake was called Dead Lake because it was the last stop on the steamboat route. And there were regular steamboats coming in uh, on schedule. Of course, there was an immense hotel out there too, a monster big, a tourist hotel, big one. teaching me a little bit of Filer history that I didn't know. Well, you're, you've been very informative. It's all there. The real shame is being here for a few months, I haven't gotten all of it, or even probably a, a quarter of it in the brief period that I've been here. And it's a real shame that outside of this historical society, none of it's being taught, none of it's being raised, raised up. It, is, it isn't even in the local schools, and there should be something there. There should be some level of outreach to Flagler or Matanzas or um, Benel, Benel Elementary, even. Over the years, Various people have tried. Uh, Prince's Place is a good example. Uh, Prince's Place, which is owned by the county, has at times tried to educate young people. And uh, there's always been somebody capable out there doing talks and demonstrations. But it was never in a really organized way. In other words, uh, regulated by the county or, you know, by the city. It, it was hit or miss. Sometimes good, sometimes non-existent. Yeah, great stuff. I guess uh, the final question. Any? Any last minute statements that you would like to leave with this interview? Well, I wish Cisco Dean was still here. Uh, Cisco, of course, was unbelievable. And uh, he is the, perhaps one of the greatest assets Flagler County ever had. Uh, and I think it's marvelous.
that, uh, that he existed, that he was my buddy, and I miss him very much. Uh, just remember that I, I'm up here in Valdosta. I'm 180 miles from you. I'm uh, right at the head of the uh, highway, of, of the uh, so-called Dixie Highway. And uh, we connect to downtown Bunnell. Uh, Route 41 here in Valdosta would once upon a time would take you right to downtown Bunnell, Florida. Uh, quite a story. I'm still here. So if you need some help or want something done, I'm available. Well, team thank you. We'll take that into consideration, and thank you so much for doing this with us. And I hope you have a great afternoon. Well, I hope you have great success on your career and figure out a way to make some money. Because money's the root of the whole damn thing. I've been trying very hard myself to find different positions and different organizations for that purpose as well. Well, best of luck to you. I'll try my best. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Well, I'll, I'll take it.